This is literally the only black wig I have, child. Ooh, uzatina ngogun cheva. Angeke wang chele mesweni. Angeke wang chele mesweni. Welcome back to my channel for those of you who don't know me my name is Gugu I'm also known as Sne underscore Gugu Leju on all my social media platforms feel free to follow me because I really do drop some dope content <laughs> welcome back guys to yet another video today I'm doing my very first chat get ready with me and I asked you guys questions back in um, April that was towards Good Friday I remember and you guys went in so i took a screenshot sorry about that i took a screenshot of um, the questions and i marked them and i saved them there's quite a few so i am going to try and answer as many as possible while i'm doing my makeup so i'm going to start off with my eyebrows that's where i always start okay so the first question is where did you grow up um I grew up in Mpumalanga province. I'm Devele. I grew up in Mpumalanga in Siabuswa, Ekusini. It's a village, like a village. It's a like homesteads. It's not even Kasi. It's like a Makaini, Kaini hardcore. That's where I grew up. I grew up with my mom, my dad, and my sisters and brothers so i'm the first child of just doing this eyebrow while talking is gangster huh but i want to answer a lot of questions so what i do is um i just draw the around my eyebrows and then i go in and lightly fill them in because I don't want them to be too dark and I'm using a brown pencil so the pencil comes it has like a black side and it also has like a brown side so I use the brown side because I don't like hush hush black eyebrows so I grew up with my parents most in Pumalanga Gwandevele it's a homestead Makayin is Lalin if you would say we're not well off my dad was working my mom wasn't working and my dad was not working like a high paying job but it was just enough to make ends meet and I went to a public school like public is in we don't pay school fees you just take your child there and then they teach them and you know public is in they teach you English, maths, everything in the world in your home language. So that's where I grew up. And then I grew up with my siblings. I have three sisters. There's a video I did when I went home. If you want to meet them, I'll put it in the description box. I grew up with my sisters and my two sisters and my four brothers. And I'm the first born. There was a child before me but uh he didn't make it I, ho I had an older brother who was three years older than me yeah but he was born before i even came so i don't know him but i always wish like i wonder how was he like how would it like big subanjani to have like an older brother let me get the second question um where did you meet your hubby <laughs> I think I got about 10 people asking me the same thing. Where did you meet your hubby? Where did you meet your hubby? Where did you meet your hubby? Everyone literally asking me the same thing. So I met my partner online back in 2009 on an app called Student Village. So basically it was just an app where students can interact and... Um, I just need to be really quiet when I'm doing this part. <laughs> okay. The 
hard part is over <laughs> so yeah I um, So I met my partner online. Back then there was no WhatsApp. I think there was Mixit. Back in 2009, the times of Mixit, I met him on an app called Student Village. Uh, I, I saw his name. I'm the one who made the first move. I saw his name on the app and it, he was calling himself. I don't know what I was calling myself, but like back in the day on chatting apps, you didn't use the actual name. I think my name on Mix it was Chalk Babe. Like you just give yourself a crazy random name that you want to use and everyone will call you that. Unlike now on WhatsApp, you can actually write your actual, your actual name, your username on WhatsApp. Like if you don't save a person's name, you can see most it's written Kuku. You know, okay, this is Kuku's WhatsApp. But then we use like crazy names. And his name was Pornstar. I know, right? So I asked him, Guy, that was, that was literally our first... Uh, conversation together um, me asking him why hi, I, I didn't even say hi I was like why would you call yourself porn star like who does that guess what he did say guess his reply he was like do you want to find out why I call myself porn star In my heart, I was like, yes, I want to find out. <laughs> but I didn't say that to him. And in my heart, but I didn't say that to him. I didn't say that to him. Child, this... Oh, this one is better. I should wash my brushes. But I didn't say that to him. Um, I said to him, don't call yourself that. Why don't you use another different name? And then that's how the conversation started. Uh, we moved away from the name and eventually just started chatting. He asked me where I am. I told him that I'm in Gauteng. I asked him where he is. And he said that he was in the Western Cape. Let me quickly do the side because I won't finish and then I'll come back. Okay, my eyebrows are done. I just wanted to show you guys the step that I do not recommend so i take got to be glue and i spray it here <laughs> and then i fix my lashes with it like this yes, yes, yes. just to define them A bit. Okay, I'm done with my eyebrows. I'm going to go in with my LA Girl eyeshadow. It's so old, but I love it so much. It's literally falling apart. <laughs> okay, let me just lift this part up. Yeah, I'm gonna go in with this shade. So let me do another question. What's the best thing about your relationship? Wow. What a question. Um, I need a mirror. I need a mirror. Let me lose this one. Okay, I can see myself here. Okay, the best thing about my relationship is the trust that me and they share. I trust this man so much. And I'm also very faithful to him. And when we first met, I didn't trust him for shit. <laughs> I'm sorry to curse. I didn't trust him at all. I, because of past relationship, not because of anything that he did. So when we started dating, uh, I automatically felt like, ah man, all men are like this. All men cheat, he's also going to cheat. All men lie, he's also going to lie. And probably this would not go far and um, I had trust issues like serious serious trust issues 
I did not trust him. I had a bad habit, habit of going through his phone. Like I would go through his phone every, almost every second night, every chance I, let me just say every chance I get to go through his phone if I'm not sleeping and he's sleeping. Uh, he didn't even lock his phone. I'd open it and check his emails, check his calls and, and stuff like that because of my, you know, past trauma relationship, people cheating, a man lying to you. That thing really messes up your mind and it destroys you. So he built, he built the trust in our relationship and he knew I was going through his phone. He would tell me, no, feel free, even if I'm not sleeping and you just want to pick up my phone and check it, do that. I'm never going to lie to you, I'm never going to cheat to you, I'm never going to cheat on you and whatnot. Uh, the first two years, I really didn't trust him, and now I trust him completely. That it's so scary because if he would lie to me now, it would really, it would break break me forever. I don't, I don't think I'd ever recover from. I, I don't think I'd ever trust anyone. That may not be such a good thing, but it's my reality. So that's the best thing about my relationship, the trust that we share. I didn't trust anyone. I didn't have faith in relationships. In a relationship, and I've been with this man for what, over five, close to six years. And he's never, I've never fought with another woman, no cheating scandals, but not. There was a girl who came. Okay, let me talk while I'm busy. I want to get my second eyeshadow. So I'm going to go in with this pinkish shade if you can see i don't want to lift it too high because it's going to fall um Gondi, what was i saying oh there was a girl at his work at his workplace but i'm shell so i stopped maybe on the third or fourth year i stopped uh checking his phone because i could see written ah man's is loyal he's not lying we're always together Literally, even when he gets a chance to go out, he never goes out. I could see who they are. This man is ready to settle down and build something real. So I started trusting him. So this other day he comes and he tells me, shows me a message it was from one of the... No, we were talking about Rukshelo and stuff like that. And I was like, who would shell are you? <laughs> With confidence. <laughs> Yo! Guy pulls out his phone <laughs> and he shows me text messages from a colleague, a married girl. I'm Shayla. They work in an office together. I'm like, so I check your phone for years. And when I stop checking, things like this start happening. So he got like, oh, I mean, I thought you saw these messages. That's why I didn't say anything to you. I didn't even delete anything. I just left them like that. But basically the girl wanted him from them to get I'm recording baby. Oh you're good. Mm. <laughs> they walked in and bit Tetan guy. <laughs> so I stopped. <laughs> I know he's gonna see this video anyway, but I don't want him to know now. So I wanna say a player love. But I know he doesn't mind. It's not like I mentioned the girl's name. Yeah, so you know a part of me wanted to like DM, not DM, like text the girl and tell her shit with her, because she knew about me, she knew very well, now we should deal or like get the husband's number and tell the husband what the wife is doing, or text her and tell her shit, like stay away from my man, stuff like that. But I was like, you know, <laughs> you can't steal a man. And if he wants to leave and do things, he'll do it. And she tried and she failed. Let me just leave it alone. It hurt me. I was quite angry. But... Number one, Sheila outside, so... If he would go and... and, and if he would go and I take every guy that tries and shell at me, he would literally look crazy. So I would also look crazy if I did the same. So I never said anything to her. 
and literally never said anything but i was itching to say <laughs> i was itching to start a fight i was so bad i'm thinking you know he's respected me let me respect myself let me respect our relationship okay this is my foundation i use the chanel foundation this is my shade absolutely love this foundation uh, the next question is what was your first job and how did you progress career wise to be at the position you're at today okay my first job i was okay i was an intern but it was an internship but that was like i did an internship for a year at the department of agriculture I don't know, I need a mirror, this thing is not working. So I did my internship for a year at the Department of Agriculture. And then internship here pale, guys. Uh, I think I was getting paid around 3.5. I think I had around 2010 or something. Yeah, I was getting around 2,500 grants. And then my internship ended. Remember when I was doing my internship, I was applying like crazy for a job and I was not getting anything. Uh, I remember the last month I had an interview in Silverton in Pretoria. I was working in Pretoria and then I didn't get the job. <laughs> internship here, Pella. And then I had to move back home. I paid rent. Like with my last money, I paid rent after paying rent. Um hoping would I'll get something and then I won't have to leave. I come from a poor background, like my mom, my parents don't have money to pay for a flat and in in Pretoria they have other kids at home that they need to look after. I care appeal internship. I called my dad I was like Diddy and I'm saving see my internship is gone. I don't have money to pay for my flat anymore. Please uh, come fetch me with my stuff. I had a bed, I had a fridge, and stuff like that. I didn't even have money to pay for transport to go back home. Yeah, my God bless my father, guys. Uh, Will you give any? From a friend of his. And then I packed myself and I went home. And I was unemployed. Employed. Not that I was ever employed, but at least in internship, I was doing something, I was learning, uh, I was gathering experience and whatnot. But then I was back to square one with my degree child at home. My little brother, he was born, my last born, I think he was born, my mom, I think he was around a year old or something. Asalanami, like everyone, my little sisters would wake up and they even would go to school, my dad would go to work. And I would be left alone at home. I would clean, I would breakfast and clean. After that, babysit my little brother. He kept me, that child kept me busy actually. He was the highlight of my day. Mangi, I'll put a clip here of me and him. Uh, he's grown now, he's grown now. And then I'd stay with him, I'd look after him. But I was so depressed and I cried every day. And I prayed every day. Guys, being unemployed, you know, I feel like, on Instagram on YouTube people don't really portray the realities of life they portray a glamorous life of which we need we need to to aspire and dream big but at the same time uh, we don't show the realities of life I was employed for a good four years my first first real job was in a prison I worked in a mixed mom prison. I was a facilitator, like a lecturer. So I would teach prisoners about agriculture. I studied agriculture. <laughs> I think I was 22 or 23. A 23 year old girl walking in a prison. In The prison was Lichtenberg, Lichtenberg prison in the Northwest. I applied for a job. They didn't tell me where the job was. They just said the job is in Lichtenberg. They'll pay for my uh, BNB. And then it'll be food and then I will get I think seven thousand rents after three weeks. So I was like, yo, I'm sitting at home, I'm cleaning, I'm babysitting, I'm taking it. So I packed my bags and I left. When I got there, they told me the place is a prison. Lichtenberg prison. And to get there I had to hike. I didn't even have I didn't have a car. Guys, unemployed you'll do anything when you're in unemployed, you'll try anything. I had to wear my girl big belt kid big girl panties and go to that prison. And ukuku. 
Now I'm talking and I'm not doing my makeup anymore. And me, I went there and I was, I think I was happy that I had a job. I was kind of scared with, okay, prisoners. And then I ended up being friends with the prisoners. Even today, they still call me. And I'd ask them, like on lunch break, I'd ask them, what did you do? And they'd tell me, what did you in the mix one prison, ne? You must cover up, like, you know, you can't wear something a short. You must at least be a long sleeve, like, neck around it like this. You can't show your boobs and whatnot. Because, you know, the guys have been in there for years and no temptations are like that. And um, when you go in, there has to be a guard. Like, they don't leave me alone. Like, there's always someone sitting there and uh, monitoring the situation. But the prisoners were so sweet, guys. Like, they were human beings, like normal human beings. And I would sit down with them and I'd ask them, what did you do? Some of them would tell me like quite, I killed someone. This other one said that she he killed the girlfriend was cheating, chopped off her head and put it at the door, a car, like at by her place, and then he left, he left the head there. <coughs> I don't know. If, the guy said he killed the girl. I'm cut her the head. I'm not like this. Ripped the head off. I don't think with a knife. I got that. I thought they hit, I shared the body there, took the head, I beggar, a kitchen, a cab, and then they called the police. I'm gonna pull this back. I don't have hair, don't laugh. <laughs> oh, like, really? Yeah, and then this other prisoner told me, who she beggar, so a taxi rank, ne? And then after that, uh, they like targeted like girls, like if you come late and you're a girl, and then you come late, I'm a taxi a pili, and it would go like, um, Oh, let me give you accommodation because you're going far and the texts are finished and in the morning I will bring you here and give you my text. I work here every day, don't worry, you're safe. Uh, what not, I stay with my family, Kai. And then you go with the guy most for accommodation because you have nowhere to sleep. And I'm a text up here. And let me tell you, I've been in that situation. I'm a text up here. <laughs> yeah, life! Guys, life before a car. I have stories. Maybe I just do story times. Anyway, that guy said, I'm going to the girls. He take them back to his place and rape them the whole night. Then him exeni am kibeze with him at exeni, and the girl lives until he did that for a while until someone reported him, and that's how he got uh, arrested. But they actually do. Um, it's a correctional service. They do assist them in changing. He felt bad and he felt like he had changed and not. I think they gave him like seven years or something in prison for doing that. I don't remember properly. It was quite. It was a while back. But some of them call me and were like, hi, how's Google? How are you? Stuff like that. No, we miss you. Thank you for coming and teaching us and whatnot and whatnot. So yeah, that was my first job in a freaking maximum prison at the tender age of 22, 23, because being funa in life. But nothing bad ever happened to me. I'm going to blend ne, offline so that Mangbuya, I can put on concealer because child, I am so slow and this video is going to be too long. Let me blend Mangbuya and Zofaga the highlighter. I won't do anything, I'm just going to blend. So the next question is what is your happiest memory? My happiest memory is definitely when they took me to Thailand and Dubai in 2018. Before then, I literally have never. Um, before then, I've never traveled most. I've never been outside South Africa. And that was the time Bubonang and Bonang and AKA were still together and they went to Thailand. You know, South Africa most, if one person goes to one country, <laughs> we all go. <laughs> like now, everyone is going to the Maldives, everyone is going to Zanzibar. It's a thing. And I also want to go to the same places. No, sh no shame. Some people are like, why are you guys going to the same place? Yeah. Leave us alone. Anyway, my happiest memory was when um, they paid for our trip to go to Thailand and then from Thailand we went to Dubai. That's my happiest memory. I enjoyed Thailand. I enjoyed Dubai. So that's my happiest memory. Let me do it. Let me do another one. Um, If you don't mind me asking, why don't you wear pants? You guys, I do wear pants. I'm gonna insert pictures here. 
I get this question. Maybe five people in a day will ask me this question. Five people and um, at that stage where I feel like I'm just going to ignore it. Because why? I'm going to add this to highlight my nose. It's I bought it at Signature. It's very old. Oh, my makeup is so dirty, child. Oh, eh, eh. I do wear pens. It's just I'm, I'm wet hand. I really don't like them. I don't enjoy them. I enjoy my skirts. I enjoy my dresses. And I believe I never stood in front of anyone and said, Yo, I go go my to do not wear pens. But because I'm always wearing skirts, I think people automatically just assume. Um, People just assume that I don't wear pants. I just don't like them. It's not that deep. It is really not that deep. Let it go. And I'm like, oh, is it because of church? No, it's not because of church. Church says <sighs> no sex before marriage. So I don't want to use Christianity to define the things that I do in my life because the day I do wrong. People wanna come like, ah, wasn't she the one saying church this, church that? No, I do, I do what I want when I want, how I want. If it's between me and God, it's between me and God. Leave it alone. But I'm never gonna hide behind Christianity you know, when I do my stuff. My lashes are drying. I'm going to highlight my face with this Mac and the shade called Deposit. You guys really should get this. It is. Oh expensive i got it on 30 percent off on super bliss you know me one thing about me i will save money i don't care i really don't care i will wait for a sale and then after that sale i'll buy oh shout yes and i'm also gonna highlight here and also going to highlight here I'm gonna put on my lashes. I'm gonna put on my lashes off screen so that we don't waste time because I really feel like I'm slow. <laughs> the next question is You know, in Golo, Zawande Vel, in the English, how did you learn and improve your English? So the question is saying, you know, uh, um, Pomalanga schools, I told him was Ndevele uh, schools. I'm from Wandevel in Pomalanga. So she's asking that, in you know, that back at home our schools really don't teach us english how did you improve your english and how did you learn and improve your english <laughs> can i tell you guys a young story time while i put on this i remember my first year ne? i was 17 i was doing my first year and i was a duty i was staying at dress so it was irres so they're not my friends the first day we met it was the first day of school everyone was moving in we just moved in and people wanted to go buy dinner and then I remember my friends were, were from English schools, like Model C schools, and they started speaking English. In my head, the English I know is the Generation TV English that I see. It's not the English they taught me at school. At school, we don't speak English. They teach us everything in Devele. So I'm very fluent in Devele. And then they start tracking, oh my God, what are you guys going to have? What are you guys going to have for dinner? I'm thinking we can have chips. Oh my God, I'm craving burgers. What should we have? I could not reply in English. In my head, I was replying, but I could not speak English. It was so bad. I just smiled. I'm like, anything. Guys, <laughs> being <laughs> poor. Don't let the Instagram life fool you. I mean, I suffered. So now they are training. Oh, what are we going to have for dinner? Uh uh. -uh. I can't, I, it hit me right there and there. Flip, I can't speak English. I can hear it, I understand it, I can write it, but I can't speak. Or maybe I didn't have the confidence to speak. I was embarrassed and I felt small. And I shouldn't feel small. You should never feel small because you can't speak English. Yes, it's how we, how the world communicates in English. But people are proud of their mother tongues. Cheki people can't speak English. Uh, France, people in French, they speak French, they don't want to speak English. Uh, people in Thailand, I've seen it myself. When you go to Thailand, you want to buy something. Me, give me this, how much, how much, me, my friend, me, me, you, you. Yes, yes, low, low price. But a fellow black person, a Devele person, a Zona person, a Zonga person, a Kosa person, they're going to come to me and tell me to fix my language, that I should speak proper, that I should speak 
better English. As if that will make me a better person. It won't. My heart makes me a better person. Who I am makes me a better person. My character makes me a better person, not my English. And I wish people would stop that. I see that all day on Twitter. People coming for each other. Before you talk to me, fix your English, child. Fix your Dwana. Fix your Ndevele. Fix your Zonga. Learn a Zonga language. Learn a Vendak language. Don't tell me about English. It upsets me. It upsets me. And I felt small and I felt embarrassed because my friends could speak English and I couldn't. And some of those friends who can twang, second semester, June, when they came back, they were gone. They failed with their English. So yes, improve your English. I'm not saying don't learn English, but don't let it make you, don't let it make you feel small and don't let, it, don't let it define you. Just because a person is twanging, it doesn't matter. They are, that does, it doesn't mean they are a better person than you. Oh, did I show you my lipstick? I love make products. This is a MAC lipstick. I also bought it on Superbulous on sale, child. Here it is. Oh, my ugly nail shoes. <laughs> so yeah, guys, be proud. Yo, black people in English, I need cozy English. You guys love English. Um, a quote you live by, a quote I live by. My sister said I must not wear my blonde hair. My sister bought uh, these things for me. I'm going to wear them on camera. I'm done, I've worn my lipstick. I'm gonna wear my Ndevele attire. I'm taking on Balo. You guys, you guys! <laughs> I'm so excited. And my belt is flat. So my sister said I must make sure that I wear this clothes with a black wig, not my uh, other colored wig. So I'm going to listen to her. If you don't know my sister, please watch my vlog where I go home. And I basically introduce you guys. Oh, I didn't show you what I'm using. I got this at Clix. It's a curl activator. Yo, my ugly nail. <laughs> my ugly nail. Okay, so I'm gonna just put it on to revive my curls. I'm not even going to wear a wig cap. I'm not even going to add glue. This is just one of those wigs that are easy. And yeah, a code that I live by is you cannot, not really a code, a code, but it's, um, um, blah, 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 blah. It's a saying, you can't commit, you can't compete with me because I want you to win too. That's my quote. Like, you can't, we can't be competing because I want you to win. So it's pointless competing with me. I'm going to wear. Do you guys know Ndebele? Can you guys speak Ndebele? Inle, But that's all. That's like an English name, Beret. But it's the Beret thing is Ndebele. So I'm going to wear this. My sister said I must wear my other nice wig. I must wear a black wig. And this is literally the only black wig I have, child. Ooh! That's a Ndebele song. That's the only Ndebele song I know, by the way. It says you will end up, you will stop at gossiping about me but you will never tell me to my face that's what the song says because i know i have oh my god heritage happy heritage day happy heritage day my sister bought these things for me and marava started this on monday and then she posted them tabby thank you sis i love her she's doing so well like i feel like this is her year she bought her first car she's blossoming she's winning how do I clip this on? This one is called Itzila. Lumbalo. Put it around here. It's in Develi culture. You wear it like this. I think the black hair works. And these ones are for my hands. I just want to spray my fixing spray and then we do our lunch for it. I'm also wearing the skirt, but I'll show you the outfit when I'm done. I'm going to take Sana, guys. I don't have those sneakers. Can I, oh, can I wear my Air Force, Air Force Ones? Okay, this is the complete look. I'm going to add pictures here of how I look. Uh, then I'm going to put this blanket around. I'm wearing a skirt. I'm going to put a picture so that you guys can see. I'm just wearing a skirt. And then a white crop top from uh, Cotton On. My sister bought these things for me, Emma Rastad. And then she posted them for me. 
so this is the complete look guys um, let me show you my thingy my makeup I know it's not wow it's not <sighs> it's not top notch but yeah I really hope you enjoyed the chit chat get ready with me it was my first one I really hope it went well and you loved every bit of it <clears throat> I feel so pretty in this look okay um i hope you guys enjoyed my chit chat get ready with me i will see you guys in my wicked vlog because i will be vlogging now um let's do this again with a different theme a normal theme <laughs> but this was my chit chat my first chit chat get ready with me on heritage day i hope you had so much fun chilling with me and learning a bit more about me uh i will see you guys next time thank you so much for 14,000 subscribers we're on our way to 15k don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell so you can know every time i upload and i will see you on my next one i love you bye